what you need from God. God said, he that come to me and no wise cast out. Now, if you want to hear anything else, you you got all kind of preachers out there. I don't know but one Lord. I don't know but one gospel. And I'm going to stay with it because I've been over 200 nations of this gospel. I just got back from Mexico and had into the. It was unbelievable. The the people that ever twice a day, ever service a thousand and more was coming out of them mountains, giving their hearts to the Lord because I didn't go down there to put a doctrine on them. I come down there to tell them about a man called Jesus. Most of them lived in the mountains, never even seen my kind of people, and never heard no kind of gospel. And some of them little bitty guys, but they give their lives to God. You'd think they was seven, eight, nine, ten years old, but they don't up there, had families. Just some people are little, but most of them was sort of split. But God, He's looking for a new crop. I believe with all my heart. He's not coming back tomorrow. He won't be back the next day. You said, how do you know? Because he said, when he does come, he said 2,000 years ago, he's coming for a church full of the devil, cussing and lying and stealing. He didn't say that, did he? Come for a church without spot. But you know, I don't know what you want to call them. Religious people or church people. But it, it ain't like it was not coming in when I was in my late teens. Did, did anybody else come in, say 20, 30, I came in when I was in my late teens. I turned it. 29th of July. I will be 85 years old. And I got saved when I was a, before I got 20 or something. And I don't know where. But I gave my life to God. I owed him. I was a cripple. I was dying. And I knew I owed him. And no doubt if you look back on your life, you probably owe him something. You ever look back and see what God pulled you out of? You ever look back how you turn him swallow that liquor down? I took two swallows of it and it burnt me like fire and I quit drinking that day. <laughs> I didn't know it burned you up. But I was going to show them people I could drink too, but two swallows was enough for me. And the next thing I had to, I bought all my guys I went around with, smoked and all that stuff. I went and bought me a pack of cools. And I'll show y'all. I said, you ain't no man. I'll light me up a cigarette. And I got me some mad money blow thing. <laughs> Lit that up my... Boy, I started coughing. Tears come out of my eyes. I said, pull on this. <laughs> If this is what takes it to be what y'all are, <laughs> I won't be a nobody. nobody. I quit smoking and right ten, two sucks. <laughs> hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. On my side of the family, they didn't do that. You all have families that didn't do that coming up? Boy, I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you, Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll be in my church. I believe there's going to be another church myself. I do. I believe there's going to be another build up. I mean, I've been almost know all the churches. And I don't know a solitary church that the people are 
striving. Women looking like women and men looking like men. It's sad. It's just so much wrong for a man to run around and show his ugly legs is it for a woman. But they're doing it now. He said, well, that's, that's, that's right. Said, no, before they had clothes like we got. Ray Young Lord, not us. And I didn't get no education much because I, I made fun of me when I started school when I was 11 and I didn't go but one day. But I studied enough, not books. And I've been over 200 countries. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Jesus is not coming back. The Bible said he's coming back for a church of people without spot or blemish or any such thing. Did you know the Bible said long hair is a woman's glory? But there ain't too many women in America no more got no glory because they ain't got no hair. <laughs> but did you know he said it was abomination for a man to let his hair grow down long like a woman? You see more men with long hair now throughout this country than you do women. Why they're lost. God ain't taking no race and race. Now that 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 Bible, that's over two thousand that was written over spoken by them holy pause over two thousand years ago. You ain't gonna change it and I ain't gonna change it. You can go out here and get you any kind of book you want to and tell you do what you want to. But one of these days you're gonna stand before a great white throne judgment just like I am. You're gonna give an account of ever, ever did you do? Amen. Ever I word? Didn't you say that? Huh? That's the word. Ever I word that you speak. Amen. God said you're gonna to have to give an account up at the day of judgment. We don't know when it's gonna be, but it will be somewhere, sometimes. And the God done said by them holy apostles and prophets that in this new heaven that God said he'd make him. The devil was in the, the heavens that, with one third of the angels on his side. And that's when we got to have a new heaven. God threw a devil and a third of the angels out of heaven. That corrupted the heaven up there. And God said there will be a new heaven, a new earth. That's why back somebody said jumped up. I mean, had it. A lot of places that jump up and challenge me. I said, well, sir, if it don't happen, then Jesus ain't going to never come. <laughs> I said, what you standing up there fighting me for what I'm saying? If that don't happen, there ain't going to be no coming of the Lord. It's well to go out yonder and tell them, put you down yonder on the ground and forget it. There ain't nothing to go back to. But there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shine. He said, come out of the world. Well, look, look at some of you. You know some of you's straddle of the fence. Look back when you was on fire for God. Raise a man on how you love God. You want to be like a Christian, dress like a Christian, live like a Christian. If you had a book to read, it'd be a King James Bible or Moffat translator. One of the two. They're the only two that's real anything to them. I just read the King James. But I'm going to tell you something. You get Jesus back in your life, you're going, to, you're going to hunger and thirst after righteousness. And if you're not hungry and thirsting after righteousness, something is slipping. The Bible said lay aside the weight. It didn't say lay aside your salvation. Lay aside all your weight and your sin, singular, that does the easy beset you and get ready to run this race. They think it be a race. I just got back into the country where we was having thousands 
where we had over 100,000 down south. And they're begging for this gospel. Even them little bitty people. There's a, one park down there's got a bunch of them little bitty people. They never, uh, you know, and I've been in there where they never seen nobody look like me, but they're hungry for God. They're not interested in, in all this here, uh, you know, run around here with a hat on and run around here with a tie around your neck, run around here trying to, uh, uh, you know, be the most handsome preacher they are. God is not even looking at that. God is looking at heart. He do want you to dress modest, but he don't want you to look like you're over the world. He, want, he does want you to get out of the world, get the world out of come out of the world, be separated. Don't even touch none of that stuff. It's wrong. If you do, he said you commit no sin, and it's not just a sin, but abomination. That whoever does all that commits abomination, and abomination sin is the worst sin there are In the world, right along with it, it's like killing somebody or raping somebody or running around with somebody's mate, lying. I'll tell you something. If you get your heart back with God, God will get that old spirit out of you. Next thing you know, you'll be so transformed, you feel like angel wings is trying to grow on you. Somewhere or another, we're going to fly away. Him to know that. But the Bible said there's coming a time this world is going to end and we're going to fly away to a new heaven. And Jesus is telling me and you, put off the old man. How many believe it's time to put off the old man and his deeds? Put off the old man, mean woman too. Lay aside even these little bitty things. And if you do that, you'll see that your world is, if, if, if enough of us preachers and helpers could get out here and get this word back like it was 60 and 70 and 100 years ago, get back in these areas. That's where we go when we go out of the country. We go back in the areas where nobody go because I want Jesus to come. Man, I don't like to think about that old box they put you in. And I'll have to kick the bottom out of it and the top out of it before he even got me to the graveyard. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't like that word death. Hallelujah. And there's going to be a multitude, a number that no man can number, alive when Jesus comes. And, it, and the people, that, you know, now they're burying them in the sea. Especially in small countries. Well, the Bible said the sea's going to give up the dead. I used to wonder how that's going to happen. They throw people in the sea. The sharks are eating, but now they got a new kind of a, a, a thing that they put the dead in and fasten up and the sharks can't do it to them. And that's where they're burying people in these small islands, throwing them out of an airplane, and they fall down in there. And that's where the, the, the Bible said the sea's going to give up the dead. Because they throw just regular people out there, the fish and the sharks that eat them up. So we know that 2,000 years ago, God knew what he's talking about. Now they've changed. Now this has been going on now for, for hundreds of years, especially for the last 100 years. They've been burning people in, 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 and dropping them out of them airplanes. Because I preach all over the scene. I've seen uh, the people, the planes come over and drop them down. And I begin to ask the pilots, I said, why are they, uh, what's some things they're dropping out? Bags or something? They said, no, them people being burned into the sea. I said, people are not, they, and I've talked to a lot of high up. They said that, that now they may not burn even a fourth of the people that used to. Put them in a grave. Now they're dropping them out on her and, and are cremating them, one of the two. South Georgia, they're cremating the dead. I don't know how them going to come back to put them in that little hern. <laughs> but anyway, they will be resurrected, won't they? And if that soul was saved and sanctified and loved God and come out of the world and the world come out of them, and when you get resurrected, you're going to a new heaven and a new earth. And 
ever things just fitting in. Like a puzzle. You know, they got puzzles that hardly nobody but professionals can put them back together. You know, take them out, dump them, and the next, next thing, 10 minutes, they got it. Or it's Everything's in its place. Well, that's what's happening. God can put us all in our place. He knows where we go. He knows what we belong to. I said, he knows what we belong to. I don't care if he cremated you. I don't care if he dropped you in the ocean. One of these days, the seas go. I used to wonder how that happened. When the shark sees them up. But I found out, the Bible said 2,000 years ago, the sea will give up the dead. How can the sea give up the dead if the, if the sharks eat them? Because they burn people in them kind of ball. Right. See, God knew all that 2,000 years ago. That the seas give up the dead. You can't, you can't give up something that's being ate up. <laughs> so we know that all that that God spoke 2,000 and more years ago, how it was going to be in the latter days, the last days, he said instead of the latter, in, in this new heaven that God's building, the old heaven where the devil and a third of his angels was thrown out, well, that heaven's going to pass away and all them people as Christians up there is going to be uh, cast into a new heaven and a new earth. It ain't going to be, it's going to be just like your dirt right here. A new heaven and a new earth. He don't say that about the heaven up there now. But a new heaven and a new earth, and in his new heaven, he said, it's going to be nothing but righteous people. And I believe these little bitty fellows, you know, I've always made that statement. I didn't find it in the Bible, but these little bitty children that, that die out when they're little, I believe they're going to be among the Christians. I just don't believe God's that kind of God that just because they didn't ever grow up to big enough to get saved, they die when they're little babies and two and three and four and five and six years old. God wouldn't be a good God if he sent them little guys to hell because they ain't never been in, born again. God's a good God. The only good God. Hallelujah. A just God and a holy God. Hallelujah. We got plenty of angels. And Jesus sat right there by him. Man, like. Man, that's, all right. that's a good feeling now, brother. Huh? That's a mighty good feeling. Just to even be by the man of God. Bible said Jesus at the right hand. Is this the right side? Is this your right leg? <laughs> Jesus is right now at the right hand of God. Making intercession, ain't he? Oh, I just love him. Don't you love him? Take up the cross. Thank you, Jesus. And it's worth laying aside all your ways. Thank God. You don't need no chimney. Run around here with them cigarettes. Quit it. <laughs> you don't need to carry that ball around that sort of uh, puts a little pep in you. Who said that? I mean, what that stuff is. Beer, whiskey, liquor, and wine. Now they got this wine where they just let it get bad and it'll make you drunk too. Anything that make you drunk can take you to hell, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody the other day said, what do you think about uh, people that smokes? They was want me to give them answers. I said, well, I said, I tell you, what I think about it, I said, I believe if God wants you to smoke, He built a chimney on your head. <laughs> Don't you? Don't you believe if He wants to smoke, He give us a chimney, build a chimney. If you ain't got no chimney on your head, you don't need to be smoking. <laughs> hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Because that stuff is wrong. You know, you know, good mother ain't nothing in a cigarette and chewing tobacco and smoking. Liquor don't help you. Wine don't help you. Beer don't help you. Name 
the one that can help you is to say, Lord, I surrender my soul, mind, and body to you. Just, and it don't take all day to do it. Just raise your hand and say, Lord, I give you my soul, my mind, and my body. Thank you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Examine. I pray all the time. Lord, examine. Hand me that little table. Whatever it is in this, right there it is. Praise God. Oh, I feel the Lord. Jesus, help us turn our world around. Oh, God. I know this is for ministers, Lord. And I pray you stir up us ministers. But God, I feel like we, us ministers, need you too. All in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. God, put a, put a, a rock on the earth. Put a, a build a hedge about us. Upon this rock, you said, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell can't touch it. Help us, Lord, right now. Thank you, Jesus. How about setting that right down there? Before we come to the altar and pray, I want to, if anybody do need to be, you can sit right there. And I'll pray for you, and I believe the Lord will heal you. And I'm going to thank the Lord. So if you need healing or come up, you might need the Lord to help you get some of your spiritual self straightened out. Come right over this way here, and, and we'll pray with you. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. And I always hold his mic. Whatever what it is, I'm, I won't. I won't. Em, never do I embarrass nobody. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Father, right now you heard this need in her life. This in her body and her soul, my body, Lord. God in Jesus' name. All these powers and forces is fighting her. God in the name of Jesus. Make her well spiritually and make her well physically. By the power of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, through the authority of His Spirit, if you've committed any sins, or if you've got cold and indifferent, right now I remit all of that. Right now I command that you be revived. I feel that, that, that you've sort of got away from God, but God! He's going to revive all of Bahio. I feel the fire. Thank God. Oh, hallelujah. You're washed. Glory. 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 Thank you, Lord. The doctor was at the doctor Monday, and he gave me some medicine for two weeks. He didn't do no good, so he shot a needle. In my knee. How long has that been happening? That's been happening about four months in, in my knee. And he said it was going to help me. Oh, hand me a chair. I don't believe it. One of them chairs up there. And I need a spiritual help too. Uh -huh. I need a spiritual help too. Okay. To I'm going to set it right, right down there. I'm going to pray for you spiritually. God will help you, but I'm going to get down to it. Is it your left knee or right one? Okay, I'm going to touch that in a moment. But right now, you're spiritual. Rest. Oh! God! Woo! Oh, I break that Glory. spirit that's fighting you by the power! Glory! I gotta pray for her knee. Touch the Holy Ghost right now. She's getting restored. Your knee's well now, ma'am. Thanks. Do a boogie. Now she's a holy roller. Come on, praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. I need a spiritual overhaul. You need a spiritual overhaul. Yes, Lord. She needs a spiritual restoration. Yes, I do, Lord. Oh, thank God. Glory to God. God, in the name of Jesus. God, right now, Lord, her downfalls and her being tried as before. And Lord, going back to some of her ways that she used to, uh, didn't have when she got that baptism of fire. I feel the fire. I do. I see a fire like a boom sage field, but I see God putting that fire out. Hallelujah. By the power of God, your sins is washed away. God has restored you. God has blotted out your past and a new day has come upon you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise him. Okay. Right now. Praise him, everybody. God, she wants a spiritual revolution. A spiritual restoration. No, that's a healing too, well, you know it. I mean, know that. You get down in the mully ground. Oh, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. By the power of Jesus Christ. And I pray for the arches in your feet too, in your ankles. They've given you some trouble. But also, see, you got some family members that's, that, that has really tried to... drag you away from God, but God's going to put you back on fire. With the power of God. God, move in her family. Move, Lord. And God, I pray for those arches. Let the power of Christ... And if you've gotten cold and indifferent and got away from God any kind of way right now through God's authority through the Holy Ghost I'll restore you I'll restore you in the spirit 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 there it is that's the Holy Ghost You just need a healing all over more than anywhere else and in your body. Well, God's going to heal you. God, I pray, Lord, that you'll touch her. Lord, and her.